Hey guys, as you can see, I have the fuel tank out of the Humvee. Today, we are gonna be putting that back in. I'm gonna give you a quick update of what we've done. So this, what you see right here, is the Holly 12-130, and that is a, a fuel pump system that you can put on any fuel tank. And you'll see you have an out, a return, a vent, um, and you just literally put that in. So the regular Humvee plate, let me see if I can find that. Because the way the build was done originally, it had this external fuel pump, and I just didn't like it. It's loud, it, uh, you know, fuel uh, external fuel, paint, sir, fuel, fuel pumps are known to be unreliable. But that's what the uh, plate looks like normally. You have your feed and your return, and then a vent, and then this is the fuel gauge, or the um, fuel gauge sending unit, which is right there. But I had a machine shop fill that in completely, except for the return, I mean the sending unit. The sending unit I put in a 12 volt because I've changed out the gauges. So when they filled this completely in, I was able to drill a three and a quarter inch hole, drop this thing in, and now I've got a wall barrel 255 in the tank with Holly's Hydromat in there, which if you don't know about the Hydromat, go, uh, go up and search that on YouTube, it's pretty awesome. It's a big mat that covers the bottom of the fuel tank. So no matter what angle or degree I'm in, it's always pulling fuel into the fuel pump. And then of course, we ran the, uh, the GM connectors for the fuel pump. We've got the factory connectors for the 12 volt sending unit. And then what I'm gonna do is run just uh, two 3 8 lines and a 5 16 line for the vent. I'm gonna run these out about three, four feet past the tank and I'm gonna put these on there, which these are just the uh, Sniper EFI connectors. So I can disconnect the fuel line and drop the tank without having to go all the way to the motor to disconnect it. So it's a little Union um, AN6 Union that should make uh, installation and removal a little bit easier. But that's what we're doing today. So everything with the motor's done, all the electrical's done. I just need to get this fuel tank back in there and then get the hood put back on and I should be ready to rock somewhat. All right, so I've got, I've finished building the front fuel lines. Let me show you those. Um, that's what that is. It's got the Holly Vapor Guard connector, Odeker clamp, Holly Vapor Guard EFI hose. Now I build them into two hoses, like I said before, because, oh, wait one second. Um, if I want to drop the tank, I just want to be able to undo the union um, under the truck and then just drop the tank. I don't want to have to reach above the tank and deal with anything up there. So all that's going to be static and then the actual connection to the tank will be off of the tank, kind of uh, probably six inches to a foot in front of it. That way I can just get two wrenches in there and drop it. Also, the, uh, the fuel lines are gonna be running right on top of the transmission and behind the motor. I've got a little bit of space, but there's a lot of heat right there. So I bought this raft that goes over the fuel lines and uh, it's good to like 1500 degrees. So I shouldn't have heat soak issues like I did before when you're running for a long time and then you turn it off and you try to turn it back on. The fuel was so hot that it wouldn't actually crank the motor over. So um, hopefully this will help with that. And then having an internal fuel tank in the gas, in the, uh, I mean internal fuel pump inside the gas tank should help too. So I'm gonna hook all this up and I'll kind of show you as I go. But right now, that is the first fuel lines hooked up to the back of the holly. And I'm about to do the return right there. And then it'll come down and follow and they'll both be wrapped in this, uh, this wrap. So here's the tank, it's done. I've got uh, the electrical done, the lines run. So under this tape are AN fittings. So I can literally just drop the tank. Um, once I put it back in, I'll just connect these AN fittings under the truck and uh, that'll be it, man. It'll be really nice. And then I've tagged with red, just a red electrical tape, which one is the, the feed line. And then I got my uh, vent and return. So, should go in. I'm gonna go ahead and start lifting it back under there for the fourth time. All right, here I am under the truck. Um, got the gas tank back in, skid plates installed. Um, you can see the amazing clearance that these Hummers have. And it's hard to see the fuel, and I, I've temporarily put the vent line up, but you can see the unions up there. Um, it's got, uh, up at the top, it's kind of a mess, but those are the fuel and return lines. Go up to the top of the motor, I'll show you that in a second. But what's nice is when I need to drop the tank, all I have to do is disconnect the unions there, 
and literally just drop the tank. Um, the hydromat's in there. I'm about to crank it up for the first time and we'll see how it goes. All right, this is from the top side. You can see we've got the main line, the return lines up here. Uh, we're about to start it up for the first time uh, since the new fuel system. So let's prime it. Let's see here, there's the Holly Sniper. Now I've set it to go to 650 RPM, but it won't do that until it's hot. So I'm expecting, I don't know what I'm expecting. So. Daddy. Now that was nice. Running super fat. Good RPM. I'm watching for fuel leak. I got my my son here helping yeah. out, but uh, yeah. we're turning some wrenches today. It is running, yeah, real rich. I can smell it. But once it warms up and learns, should be a good bit better. We've got yeah, fuel gauge is working. Fuel gauge quarter of a tank, 50 psi, 15, 14 and a half volts. Yeah. I haven't hooked up the water gauge yet because it's on here. Uh, it's running 69 degrees. I yeah. act wide open, but just to keep it running, I guess. I don't know. I'll let it warm up. I'll play around with it, and uh, we'll do the next video soon.